Ready? Here we go. Different points of view and highs and lows. A new perspective everywhere you go. Open up your mind, drown out the noise, and see if this connected. And see if this connected. What's up, fam? The mission of this connected podcast is to connect generations and situations about faith, life, and whatever comes along the way. To not necessarily agree, but be listened to. These conversations, of course, highlight the perspective of our various guests, and you are always welcome to agree or even disagree. But as always, we hope that it is done in charity. Now, here's your host, Catholic.Dad. Thank you, Tony, for that introduction. As always, we are on our series of Connecting to Marriage and Family Ministry. And today's guest, we have Gaston and Jamie. And first, before we start that, we want to uh, encourage you, if you have no, I'm sorry, if you are not yet a patron to our podcast, visit us at, well, look at it, because Tony's not here to tell you where it is. I think it's Patreon slash Disconnected. Um, Also, if you want to send us an email, catholic.dad dot catholic dot dad 50 at gmail.com you send us an email or a comment and we ask you to continue to support our podcast um aside from that jamie gaston welcome to the show and first of all tell us who you are tell our listeners who you are because they're looking like okay marriage and family ministry what's this about and don't look so scared because tony's not here this is like a conversation. <laughs> this is like being in okay. my family oh. kitchen. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. So tell us who you are. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Um, what ministry are you in? Because this is a faith-based um, podcast. We serve the Diocese of San Bernardino. And any, well, we're based in the Diocese of San Bernardino. So go San Bernardino. Go Dino. Yay! Yay! Yeah, that's right. Dino. There we go, Gaston. The coming out. <laughs> Well, I can start. Um, I am Jamie. I am a teacher. I service students um, here in San Bernardino County, and you know I'm actually a product of um, of San Bernardino County Schools, and I I feel like I haven't left. I haven't left um, this area. I grew up. Uh, I was born in the Philippines. Me too. Yeah. Woo. I was born in the Philippines, um, moved here when I was really young, like I was under one year old, um, to San Bernardino. And then we moved back when I was six. Um, My dad was stationed back at um, Clark Air Force Base again, where I was born. And uh, by this time, we were a family of four. And then uh, when we came back to San Bernardino, we were a family of five. Oh. Yes. So, um, started elementary fifth grade here back in California and then um, went away to college to Riverside for a little bit um, studied in Spain for a bit and came back and um, back teaching at my old high school which is Redlands High School yay mm-hmm. that, that's so awesome that you stay yeah. in the community because we do lose a lot of talent Mm -hmm. Um, to our surrounding counties because of the pay or because of the communities Mm -hmm. Um, but it's always amazing we always encourage our young people to give back what you receive by staying you know stay a while and 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 make this place the place that other people want to come move to because it it is such uh, you know we moved here um, in the late 80s and 90s and um, it's just become home We've Mm -hmm. never tried to move out again. Uh, Not because we couldn't. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. I mean, I don't think I've left. Yeah. I haven't left this And you also sing. Yes. That that is the ministry that I have been 
uh, most involved in is music. That's what brought me back to um, really getting involved in the Catholic Church. Because so I did my uh, baptism or first communion in the Philippines, mm -hmm. um, you know, each time that I lived there, respectively. And, you know, when we settled at St. Joseph's, the work, St. Joseph's, St. Joseph the Worker. Yeah, St. Joseph the Worker, La Melinda. Mm -hmm. Pass that every day. Yeah. Oh, their, yes. Their family did. Yeah, that's she me. Looked at me as if we. Had. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they yes. Um, Father Ignatius. Father Ignatius was one of my pastors. We started off with Father Gill. <laughs> that sounds. Father Ignatius. Yeah. Father Ignatius. Father Ignatius, <laughs> Father Ignatius was a yes. chaplain at Patton State Hospital. <gasps> I'm, I'm just. Oh. I'm just kidding, guys. I don't know who Father Ignatius. <laughs> it just sounds like one of those typical like yeah. Catholic fathers. That I, I'm going to let out yeah. a little story but. about Father Ignatius. <laughs> Father Ignatius, apparently at St. Joseph, was asked by Bishop Barnes that he had to do bilingual masses. And this was Father Ignatius telling me this story. Father Ignatius says, well, okay, but I don't think very many of my parishioners um, will understand Hindi. Yeah. Because Father Ignatius is from India. Yeah. Uh. And Bishop Barnes says, no. Spanish and English. Yeah. <laughs> and Father Ignatius said, Oh, I'm too old to learn another language. Oh. <laughs> and then he became the Love chaplain that at Patton. Guy. He was awesome. Like, Go he to was Patton. a great pastor. <laughs> <laughs> he was hilarious. He, he he would go up to me and said and say, you know, he knew I was Catholic, he knew mm -hmm. I was serving, and he would say, It's Ash Wednesday. I'm like, mm -hmm. Yes. So are you gonna set up my room? He's like, Why do I set up the room? <laughs> and he said, Because when I set up the room, it looks just like a table with a cloth on it and that's it. <laughs> When you set up the room, there's music, there's, Aww. there's, he says, there's music, and it's like, it's like church. And I'm like, what, well, isn't that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I remember yeah. Father Ignatius being a very simple man. It was very. Yes, very simple. Straightforward. Yeah. I, I like Love that. It. I miss him. He was him. awesome. And it's, it's nice yeah. to hear that when you set up a table, it's multimodal. Mm -hmm. You hear it, you see you it. You see it. And you, you and it's also it. tactile. Yeah, you feel it. You feel yeah. it. And, yeah, and and Struggling. you know the 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 lighting. I also had lighting, oh. and and um, the staff really liked it because they were like, "Wow, I feel so relaxed." And Father Ignatius, said, after you receive your ashes, after I impose ashes, you can go. Yeah, and I'm like. Giving them, the, yes. you can sit and reflect for a while. Oh. And he's like, no, you can go. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you guess them? First off, i got to meet this Father Ignatius just yes. so that I know where he is. I don't know where he is. So I, so, I, so I could tell you guys that I met him. There we go. Um, <laughs> and I didn't just do Hear the about. whole Father Ignatius thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, all right, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm Gaston Ochoa. Gaston? Not Oscar. Not Oscar. Not Oscar. <laughs> as Arnel thought. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, and who, 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 um, who invited us here great, graciously during, um, Bethany and Tony's wedding. And, and I, and I, I, I was just a guy, I'm a guy that was impressed by you holding the, uh, the, the, the attention of the crowd. So... So like, yeah. so nicely with humor and yeah. and with the stories and and uh, and calmness and uh, you set people up for for success. You and know, I was uh, sober. Yeah. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's well, I mean, awesome. slightly well, sober. <laughs> well, well, perfect because I thought you did a great job and yeah. I didn't, you know, for I didn't. I didn't look into, you know, if you weren't, but, um, I am also sober, um, <laughs> emotionally, yeah. um, but, uh, I think that's the big story of mine, um, that prior to Jamie and I being wed, um, uh, yeah, it kind of ran in my family to, to be not so emotionally sober, and, 
and that affected me, of course, um, after my 20s, um, and throughout the rest of my life. But, I mean, who am I? I am, I'm a, I'm a Christian man, um, I'm a husband, I'm a brother to, to my family, um, uh, I am, I'm a friend, you know, I'm a teacher, uh, by profession now. But before being a teacher, which was, which took a, which took a, um, a leap of faith to become, um, I was a designer, an architectural designer. And, uh... Have such a connection. Oh. Oh, is that right? Can you continue? I'll tell you what okay. our connection is. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I've always been creative, and when I was, uh, when I was a kid, I drew, and, um, and, uh, I drew a lot. You know, I think I drew a lot because I wasn't good at uh, speaking, and I wasn't good at um, the English language. You know, because in my home, uh, you know, my my parents were both immigrants. You know, who came here from to Mexico from from Yucatan, Mexico, in the you know basically the late '60s, and so my dad was a pioneer, and you know, but minus the stove. <laughs> I just the uh, iron, iron, uh, cast iron the pot hat. Um, he was just a Mexican guy that had good verbal skills. So I think it's in, I think it's in our brain to like know, the, mm -hmm. to have verbal skills, you know. Mm -hmm. But in my home early though, I, we just didn't like to read, you know. I just, mm -hmm. and so I'm a, I'm a product of the public schools too here in San Bernardino. It's funny, Jamie and I recall that. She's a, she's, she's from South San Bernardino, and now is in Central San Bernardino, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I grew up. Um, um, I don't know why my dad didn't take us out from the battlegrounds that were, <laughs> the gang battlegrounds that were yeah. considered Central and West San Bernardino. Maybe it's because he wanted us to develop a thick skin against, you know, you know, the fire violent neighborhoods and and just plain mean neighborhoods and, and, and society's, you know, um, effects on the socioeconomically disadvantaged because that's what they are and they don't mean to be. Mm -hmm. They become that way. Mm -hmm. um, these gangs and mm -hmm. these gang members. And by the way, last year I spent a year teaching at a continuation high school. You know, mm -hmm. um, and not because I was forced to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, kind of, a little bit, but... Yeah. <laughs> Encouraged. But he was able to really relate. That's, that's neat. You know, uh, yeah. Um, and, and, um, but, but to wrap up the point about San Bernardino, um, um, well, I was a product of there. I left there, but interestingly, I'm back. And not because I'm forced to, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I have a new attitude on it, too. One that says, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel sorry for you. I came to help and be of service. And I think I got something real good for you. Mm -hmm. Not this, like, I'm relegated to this shitty place. Mm -hmm. Here's your you option. Know, you know, and pay me. No, mm -hmm. no. You know, it's not like that. Um, I've gone through recovery myself. Um. And that's very important to my story. Um, recovery from the effects of having grown up in this family that I have, um, where I've experienced intergenerational traumas and, 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 and such. So I'm, I'm like God's son, you know, and, um, and I'm blessed and I'm also, you know, and I have challenges and, and, uh, and I'm in a marriage where we're very fruitful where there's challenges, where there's such hope, and ultimately hope to get to heaven, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if we can muster that, if we can meek out a vision of it, because it's so freaking hard, you know, mm -hmm. to, to even, you know, in our current day and age and, and today. So, <laughs> it's nice to be here. It's nice to be yeah. here, Arnell. And we've never been on a podcast, by the way, but I love the way these sound. 
Because it sounds like we're in a dark room. Just it is. With nothing else. And, and before, before we had to put this on before video. This, Thanks, Tony. Tony. <laughs> we were literally. You're the in, young generation. We were literally in a dark room. I kind of like it though. <laughs> no lights. It was just oh. like <laughs> can't see anything. Could see anything. It was just like we were like just in a room. You know, yeah. you had to brush your hair. You didn't have to wear clean clothes. <laughs> Because you couldn't see anybody. You couldn't yeah. see why anybody. Why would you? <laughs> so you just had to put on your radio voice. <laughs> right, right. Why, why would you get dressed or clean, exactly. you know, clean up? Or, you know, that was our generation. There wasn't light. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw the inside of a studio, like radio, um, for such a long time. Thank you. These are not just props, right? I don't no, and we are not sponsored by Smart Water, but we like <laughs> Smart Water. But if you'd like to sponsor us, yeah, we're yeah. open to it. Yes. Yeah. And if you are a liquor store, a grocery <laughs> store, and you'd like to send us smart water, <laughs> we'll sponsor you. There we go. <laughs> so like we're open to anything. anyone who will sponsor our, our craziness. <laughs> but it's a beautiful story. I, I share with you because when I was growing up, I wanted to be an architect. And I was talked out of it by a counselor, a high school counselor who said, there's no work in that. Then I wanted to be a history teacher. And then there's your parents says, no, you're Filipino history? It's like, you should be a nurse. <laughs> I, that's... Intergenerational oh trauma. This <laughs> is, this is And so when I, when I grow up, too. so my oldest daughter, she is actually going to do what I wanted to do, oh. be a teacher. And it's funny Beautiful. because my wife's whole family, they're all a bunch of teachers. Oh. Yeah. And the story is when they started becoming teachers, even my, my, my mom's sister, aunt, uh, uh, Dominga, um, mm -hmm. she is a teacher, mm -hmm. a product of the Thomasites in the Philippines. She became a teacher at, after finishing the sixth grade. <laughs> wow! You graduate, you get a sixth grade education, mm -hmm. you get to be a teacher to teach little kids in rural rural areas and that was my aunt she, that's, that's awesome yeah. she graduated sixth grade she became a teacher and you know um in my family i have one aunt my mom's oldest sister that is a teacher she still teaches to this day she's in her 70s she's in guam and i was the next i you know my mom is the youngest of eight and um, I'm the firstborn, and that's when education linked up again in the family. And it's it's interesting because I had my my head and heart set on being somehow in the education field. Yet my mom said, "No, oh, why don't you be a nurse? Why don't you be a nurse?" I'm like. I hate science. <laughs> I took my lab sciences in the summer because I wanted to avoid them during the school year. <laughs> Jamie showed her mom uh, her her math scores, and uh, in relation to <laughs> no. science, in relation to science, her mom, <laughs> her mom looked and and, uh, and and nodded in agreement that maybe <laughs> maybe you, maybe should, you be. should try to pass as an English teacher. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that's not a true story. <laughs> that's along the lines, you know, like, I had to really prove to my mom, though, that... Your mom's that, a genius. No, actually, she reversed psychology to you. There you go. And, <laughs> and you became what you became because, you know... Yes. Just, Moms are really good with that. Yeah, they really are. And reverse psychology. Yeah. I was supposed yes. to be a dentist. Oh. <clears throat> of all people who hated dentists. Oh. Yeah. Make the guy the dentist. And I was like, oh, I'm never going to succeed in this. I had two and a half, three years left. Oh, and okay. they dropped out. Oh. oh, wow. So you were in you were in school. I was in. That was oh, in. Oh, good for you. And I was yeah. like, no. I heard statistically that's, yeah. that's, that's where most people... And then I know how much our dentists make at our hospital. I was like, man, I should have finished those three years. <laughs> But, uh, but I also hear that um, you can dentists their their markets open to become rich because every community every block needs every every community needs a, 
you know, a good amount of dentists, and yeah. all you need to do is open your doors, and, like, I hear that that's, like, basically, if you can do it, you can be, you can be very yeah. wealthy, but people, it's hard. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, we have to learn mental health-wise. We need to learn from uh, the dentist, our, our, our dental medicine, because everybody knows how often you should brush your teeth. And everybody knows how often you should go visit the dentist. And everybody does, at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. And yet, mental health, even though it's provided in our mental, uh, in our, our medical providers, yeah. nobody uses. Nobody really goes out to get their therapist unless they have to. I always encourage people, you know, see your therapist at least three times, four times during the year because it's free. And even your workplace provides those services, and yet they don't use it. And then we wonder why our world's so screwed up. I mean, I, I, say, mean, keeps us employed. I say the same <laughs> thing. I say the world would be so much better if we all just went to therapy. Right. And you know what? It's In our marriage, we go to therapy at least twice a month. Same therapist? Yes. <laughs> Yes. I have same. mine, you have yours, and then we have ours. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how it is. Like, I see mine weekly. We see our marriage family therapist um, about every two weeks or so. And, yeah. I mean... That would be maybe more than we wanted to share, Jamie. <laughs> 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 well, maybe get back to this possibly for editing... <laughs> what well, we wanted to say is that we do have I, I do MFD. need to give you guys this. Okay. This podcast, mm -hmm. Mr. Arnell, is very lazy. So oh. our editing is in the beginning and in the end. And if we do edit, it's like bleep, 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 bleep. Okay. We don't cut. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then we'll try to, to try to keep it going then. Yeah. But, um... No, I think what's most important is that, um, is that uh, I think what's working very well in our marriage is to not be afraid of like mm -hmm. of, uh, of of visiting MFT, you know, mar marriage family therapist. Um, we 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 uh, kind of intuitively knew to do so, and we didn't know to do so because who knows to do so, right? But we yeah. we 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 in intuitively thought it's a good idea, you know. So from the very start. Jamie and I went to an, an MFT, and um, and um, we we didn't search long, you know, and uh, and this fellow came up, um, and we've been seeing him for for what, like five years. Uh, more like six or seven. No, I want to say more than like five, but since uh, two thousand fifteen. And it's been helpful. Seven. Yeah. And it's been it's been it's been helpful. Um, and mainly to get to know, um, it just keep what keeps on coming up is the baggage we bring we have, so that we we know how to not let it interfere, and tools to help us connect. You know, mm -hmm. like since this basic communication. You know? How to respond yes. and how not to respond. Yeah. To certain things that that uh, and knowing what each other's triggers are. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we get into that really toxic relationship where we use our love, our partner's triggers mm -hmm. just to. Mm -hmm. I know this is gonna set them off, so I'm you upset. Too, now? Oh yeah, boy. That's <laughs> wow. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> so I've been married for 26 years, happily married wow. 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that's how you that's that's it's up. No, 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 no. My wife okay. hates it when I I, I introduce mm. her as my ex girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah it's, she is. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been married for eight years, and we just celebrated. Um, well, we renewed our vows I a couple that. weeks ago. Yeah, July nineteenth, and we we celebrated. Um, a mass, a special mass on that day. Uh, it was a Tuesday. By the way, I we remember. wanted to be there. Oh. Because our anniversary is July 14th. Oh. And we, set, we spent it apart. Oh. Because I was quarantined. 
and she was quarantined. Yeah. We had a COVID anniversary. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. How many years with a COVID? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Twenty six years. Wow. Twenty six years, I think. Uh, I'll have to ask her for that. Yeah. Is it twenty six years? <laughs> wow, 26, 26 years. years. We got married in 1996. We were going to wait several years before we had children, really enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. Next year we were pregnant. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Dana came out. Yep. Yeah. 1997. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so about these, we were talking about the triggers and how to, and avoiding them is the key to a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Literally no. it is. Yeah, yeah. And, it really and it's is. not so much avoiding them, I don't think. But it's no recognizing. Them. Understanding. That that understanding pain. that, yes, th this is a trigger of my husband. <sighs> just take a deep breath and just, mm -hmm. you know, don't, you don't need to say that. Do you, do you really need to say yeah. something to set him off right now because it's just going to go go south yeah. and um you know again it's not i facing the trigger is one thing and understanding it and understanding him more is uh you know that's the next step and so i don't um yeah and sometimes I unconsciously um, will, you know, will not avoid the trigger, um, and like it, it's a matter of something that we're learning to do is is to assume good intent. Let's let's yeah. let's give our listener. <laughs> <laughs> our listener. <laughs> He's been <said> one. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> This is now the Gaston and Jamie show. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let's give our listeners uh, uh, a face, an, uh, a name to that, a, a yeah. face to that name. Okay. So a trigger, for example, for me, is when you are behind me and you're micromanaging me and are forcing mm -hmm. me to do something. Because the mm -hmm. way I grew up was, was um, with some of those... Um, you raise uh, yourself. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, kind of part of that, like, you kind of had to, but not so mm -hmm. much. It's just that, like, um, you know, some of the effects of, say, for example, on my dad's side, and some on my mom's side, of alcoholism, you know, those people, they, they tend to be about control, and controlling what they can, and they go hand in hand with a married couple, so, you know, my mom would be behind my dad, after my dad was trying to control the world because he's not meaning to but he would he would come full circle right onto my mom and he'd he and, and my mom subconsciously or something like mm -hmm. wants that wants to be controlled because she feels out of control or something yeah. so mm -hmm. the the action on my mom's part is to tell you what to do and be behind you until you do it and and and, and when sh you get it done right it makes her feel Okay, so when Jane yeah. can do that, that's one of my triggers. But yeah, okay, go for it, then. go. Yeah, and <laughs> my trigger I, is micromanaging, yeah. being told what to do. And that's something that he told me early on when we were dating, and it took, it took, our dating year and a half, including engagement and, what the last eight years of our marriage for me to really understand. Where I was like, oh, I know she's gonna ask me. I'm really not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah. get yeah. a hold of that and mm -hmm. say that is not healthy. Yeah. And you need to grow up mm -hmm. and you need to actually behave in a way that you would want the other person to respect you. And right, right. And I've learned that throughout the years just like if I can regulate myself and my reactions and my, um, if I can regulate my triggers and recognize them and say, okay, I'm getting upset now, <laughs> and why? What, what's, what's setting me off? And then, then I can, I can listen. I can 
seek understanding more because that's what our faith is about okay. right and seek understanding mm -hmm. be compassionate and um and let god in yeah. that's something that we have done from day <clears throat> one we met at church wait oh isn't it yeah. we weren't doing it from day one <laughs> What? <laughs> we weren't doing that from day one of our marriage. But no, we we, letting we, God in. Yeah, no, no, that, uh, yeah. It's, it's, We've it's always serious. let God in. That's the point. That was, that was, the yeah. Right. So we, um, you know, God has been, you know, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit has been part of our marriage from, you know, our relationship from day one. Because we, we met at church. How did you meet? Um, who met who? Like we yeah. met each other through mutual, well, mutual friends? No, through, uh, through friends, so, um, I, 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 you got it? Here, to, we yeah. met at church in music ministry when Jamie came to audition to be the lead director of the music ministry at St. Adelaide Church. One day in around Halloween, I know. Because Jamie's hair was painted orange. That's nice. <laughs> and, and I and and I was distracted, and I thought this girl is not going to get the job. Uh, <laughs> my but hair, it was her like her voice is so beautiful, and that's one of the reasons I fell in love. Oh. Yeah. But let's go back to the uh, audition because I think that orange hair was. I don't. Father Pierre was apparently okay with it, but yeah, okay. Was so it my it was Wait, orange. But, but what were you? Were you in the choir? Or? Well, yeah, I was. I was. Uh, I was the drummer. I was the drummer. I was he playing, was a percussionist. I was playing, yeah, a, um, I was playing the uh, cajon. Uh, mm -hmm. I was playing an instrument that I designed and built mm -hmm. um, because the church said we don't have a budget right now. Mm -hmm. More so, the director at the time. Mm -hmm. said we don't have a budget right now can you make a little uh, drum and I was like yeah well I'm fresh out of architecture school <laughs> and, it's, and it's 2009 uh, yeah, oh, yeah gosh, I better, yeah. Get, my, get, better <clears throat> get myself busy recession. designing and building something recession was still in full bloom yeah and uh, and so I made it and and um, and by the way um, you know both Jamie and I share that we um, we're both cracked nuts so um, yeah <laughs> And that's what I was going to say when I, when I was trying to inter interrupt Jamie. But, um, you know. But what does that mean? Crack what does that mean? They're slightly cracked that? nuts. I don't know. Am I safe here? Yeah. <laughs> no, you I know where I work at Patton State Hospital, so I, I need to know my <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boundaries. Yeah. Right. It's all about boundaries. No, yes. um, I, I say it that way facetiously because um, I heard a friend say it. Yeah. Um, and she said, I mean, what good is it if we're not, if, you know, like, if, if our nuts aren't cracked, like, yeah, that didn't sound right. <laughs> but, uh, if, if, if we're not open, Arnell, to, mm -hmm. to how we are on the inside, how we are um, really, um, call it dependent on God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really open to the Holy Spirit, vulnerable, and vulnerable, mm -hmm. and, and, um, um, and, but I will tell you, um, aside from that, which is the great part of being a cracked nut, you know, mm -hmm. is, yeah, I have, I have been depressed before, mm -hmm. you know, and that is important mm -hmm. in my yeah. story. And, and, and I facetiously say it that way, um, um, but, you know, the truth is I have suffered from, from mental illness. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, I would like to say behind me. But of course, I think mm -hmm. everyone has a has um, a, a propensity to be mentally ill because, mm -hmm. well, you're human, mm -hmm. right? But um, more so specific, mm -hmm. more, more specifically, um, it does play into our marriage, though, mm -hmm. and, and, and marriage as Christian people, because um, God really has brought us a long way mm -hmm. in our recovery mentally. And also through our traumas, and uh, with so the with of, music, with, with yeah. the support of uh, of people, yeah, um, mentors and and um, and our ministry. And by the way, that's what brought us together. 
-hmm. That's what literally brought us together. Music yeah. ministry. Music ministry. You can really filter it down <clears throat> and just say music brought us together. Yeah. Specifically, our church's music. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, I was praying for years for a wife, for the right wife, you know? Um, I read... I was praying for a husband. Yeah. I was praying that I would meet him at church. And I was praying that he would uh, sing and do, mu you know, play music with me and dance with me. Sing and dance. Like... Yeah. <laughs> 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 like uh, one of those Russian... <laughs> <laughs> Russian uh, ballet guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, no pictures, no imagery. <laughs> no. <laughs> Barishnikov. <laughs> But yes, you know, we, we pray. We really did pray <laughs> for each other. That's what and it means, so, Jamie, when you say sing and dance. Like, yes. It means like dance like that. <laughs> so, and she came with orange hair. Yeah, it, okay, let me... My hair was... It was like <laughs> red with blondish streaks, and it was faded by that time, okay? So it looked kind of orange. No, but it, it, my hair definitely was a fiery, odd color, and now it's purple. <laughs> uh, it's gray and purple and and dark, but uh, yes. And so is mine, pretty. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting there. Yeah. So um, yes, I was I was selected to be. It was a youth choir too. Yeah, the youth sure choir. Was. So um, I, you know, the youth came to the afternoon mass on those Sundays and. Um, and yeah, it it was really cool because it won't good? turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and yeah, it, it was a thing where um, Gaston didn't and I didn't see each other every week, but anytime he would come and and play his cajon with us, I was I would go home um, to my roommate at the time and be like, he was there, he was at church. And, um, and so, you know, I was, I was really interested in getting to know him and any opportunity I got, I, I tried to get a little bit more from him. Like, oh, what, what, who, what's this guy all about? So, yeah, I, we just started to get to know each other. Yeah. Um, and Jamie's got game. <laughs> 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 because you I couldn't tell she liked me. And uh, and she was, apparently, I mean, for how long she said she was... Oh, she was playing hard again. From get. day one. From day one. But she, September 2nd, 2012. Me, which which I think, again, shows you that dynamic of, like, who, why, <clears throat> why we are attracted to the people we're attracted to and, and are, and are, you know, because I, I was, a, I was... At first, not drawn to that like, you know, we're drawn to candy, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, or that is how how you're drawn to say a bowl of rice. It's like it's a bowl of rice. Mm -hmm. It's 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 probably nutritious. It was so nurturing though. Jamie's not a bowl of rice. She, Jamie's a Jamie's <laughs> a, <laughs> a candy. Ja Jamie's a, Jamie's a, a, a you know a a, a a really a bowl of rice with adobo maybe. Yes, a bowl of rice. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm, 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 going askew now. No. But, um, no, yeah. I, I, I just, um, he couldn't pick up on the fact that yeah, I yeah. was interested in him. Yeah, and, 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 that, and that, and that oh. independence, and, and I can, I'm holding my own life, and, uh, I, and, and I'm deal and I'm leading my own life, and I love my life, and I have things to do, and people to see, and horizons to, you know, lay my eyes upon. Yeah, that's what I was like. That's, that's, uh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Because at the time I was, I was going into a, another depression, mm -hmm. living at home with uh, <clears throat> the toxicity of my, mm -hmm. of my, of, 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 of how my home was at the time. <clears throat> um, uh, parents doing the best they can. Yeah, now mm -hmm. my attitude mm -hmm. is my parents are doing the best they can. Whereas at the time it was, you know, a lot of misunderstanding what my parents, how they behave. <clears throat> they're they're struggling with each other. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I, yeah, we found each other at this um, 
at this point where you know I was I was discovering my individuality even more like I was barely out of my parents house um, for like three years at that point um, going into my 30s yeah I was I was um, I was what 31 you know um, seems later in life to these days to me to meet my spouse but oh gosh God's timing was and, but he was incredible. clueless yeah he was clueless I, I really was because um, <laughs> because you know I was physically attracted to Janie like um, but I just at the time I was was it because you were shy was, well but you were afraid of being denied all of the above plus <laughs> Um, so shy, <clears throat> fear of being denied, and just plain out of it. I, I was just, you know, that's what depression can do to a mind. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, and, you know, I, on our f when Jamie asked us asked me out on our first date. I wait, wait. <laughs> okay, okay, we're back up. Uh, yeah. Back up. True yeah. story. So you're like, you're like, uh. Yeah. And then Jamie basically finally says, "Oh, screw this! I'm not going to wait for this guy." <laughs> yes, that was that was what was going on in my mind. Like firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> firstborn. That, that, that's yes. what you get out of that. That, yeah. that firstborn, like, hey, mm -hmm. I, I came here to make it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so you know, and I appreciated that because I certainly was, you know, yeah, I, again out of it, but way too much in my head, and and also mm -hmm. shy and. Mm -hmm fearing that I was going to get denied and just that just it was it's just ugh, you know that's that's right. what that's what that mushy mind mm -hmm. is about and, and that's so, something that's different between Gaston and me is um I'm pretty impulsive <laughs> um you know as first born female and you know fire military. sign military <laughs> yes traveled like I I like my family had to pick up and move very often when I was a kid and so I had to just you know roll with it and Jamie, so I was rolling with it you Jamie know self-proclaimed she's a, a go-getter <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know if I ever called myself that Are but people me? call me that a lot yeah <laughs> I'm a I, I like to call myself a pioneer but um like in our <laughs> The three cast point iron hat. hat. Oh, okay. Cast iron skillet hat. There I'm, you I'm, go. I'm, I like that idea. Yeah. It's so folklorish, but like in our cultural histories, there's pioneers yeah. a lot. Uh, Trailblazing. Pioneers in our very families. There's people that pave the way, and and that word just has that. Cast iron hat <laughs> stigma, or that is not labeled to. We're, we're gonna have to get cast iron hats for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie so asked old. you out, okay. mm -hmm. and you said to Starbucks. To Starbucks. Jamie asked me out to Starbucks, and um, <clears throat> and I was lining up the excuses, um, including you know, including that my priest uncle and I had plans to go to a movie which yeah. was always my go-to like, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, let, let me think about it Jamie and then when he said that what did you say it's like uh, okay. what's wrong with this man right so the question <laughs> was oh do you have any plans tonight he said oh yeah I might you know I, I I'm going to be going to a movie with my uncle and he was like but what 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 are you doing and I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of cold. It was November, it was December, like around Christmas. I said, I'm kind of cold. Do you want to go get tea at Starbucks? Oh, that's what I said? I did. No. That was me. You're going to be proud of me. She's the proud. pioneer. Yeah, so I, I, I just I threw it out there. I said, um, I was like, do you want to get tea at Starbucks? And he said, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. It's, it, I was, I was, I was... I was backed into a corner by God because a healthy mind, you cannot deny that that's what's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, if you did, if you say no, you're going downhill. You're yeah. going down. 
I had no option but to do the right thing, and, which was I'm to, so glad which you was said to yes. say yes to this, <laughs> to this pretty lady who is the director now, and, and go with her, and, and, it, and I was like, damn, you are on an official date. <laughs> and, and like, he took me <clears throat> in his car. Yeah, a yeah, few I, I yards of, away because Starbucks was down the street. We could have walked, but we got into well, a To my car. credit, it was more like 200 <laughs> yards away. There you go. <laughs> you were so nervous. 100 yards away. <laughs> Football field, yes. Football field. Football and, field away. And we had a... Um, and it was so good for me to, like... Because... Uh, not to rail on depression, but... Um, it is a... Chapter. Mm, debilitating. Chapters in my yeah. life. And it's debilitating. And it wants to control you. You know, mm -hmm. but um, it and takes one courage. Thing that I heard, it takes courage yeah. to um, to 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 not submit to those um, ah forget lack of a better mm -hmm. term voices. You know, yeah. say yeah. I don't think so. Not today. You know, it's you're not ready or not feeling well. Mm -hmm. You know, feelings are a big deal these days. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not supposed to control me though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And or. I'm not supposed to be a slave to them. So in that particular time, I could have gone with how I felt, which was slung down and and mm -hmm. and fearful. But you know, you kind of you kind of courage up and you let take some breaths of oxygen and and God God carried me because if mm -hmm. if if not for that um, if not for that I wouldn't have reached the point at that particular date when I was looking at Jamie and she was drinking her mint. You know, mint. Do you remember? Mint tea. Well, we ordered we the same thing. We had the same thing, but we and called it something different. Yeah. And you can get Tazo that. tea you can calls get it refresh. Here and he though. said peppermint <clears throat> tea. So um, I wouldn't have got to this point without God's inspiration and courage to really start falling in love. You know, mm -hmm. um, I I saw Jamie. I just. It's so idiosyncratic, but I saw Jamie lift her chin, you know, do one of these, and like, like those like upward, upward looks where like you're breathing, you're living, you've got this thing happening, and to me that was like very sexy, you know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, it was like it was like living and and, 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 and living, you know. Like mm -hmm. and I saw and I saw a beautiful woman, and I thought that 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 girl's beautiful. And I, I, my mind, oh, my eyes literally like opened up, and I thought, wow. "That's God breathe." And, and mm -hmm. I will not, yeah. I won't be dishonest, or I, I won't lie. I, like, mm -hmm. I was falling in love at that moment. Mm -hmm. very, at Starbucks. But yeah, at that very moment, I, th I said oh. that girl was beautiful, and I thought, like physically oh. and. The, in, the independence, the the courage to be yourself. I mean, I thought this is maybe it was a bit in contrast to how I felt and who I was, mm -hmm. but it was undeniable. I mean, like I said, you were doing right and you were thinking right. I mean, let me. I want to be on that train, mm -hmm. despite how I felt. You know. So that was the beginnings, the very very beginnings of our love story. You know? oh, yeah. That moment <laughs> when you. Breathe in that Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and we're inspired yeah. to inspire mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and you let out, and you let your voice speak for you. Yeah. And so, did you, Jamie? Did you realize that you know Gaston was struggling with depression, or you just think, oh, he was just shy and and yeah. quiet? I I thought that <clears throat> he was shy and quiet actually. Um, it. He talks about he he's mentioned that he open his eyes open. But the very first moment that I met Gaston, his eyes were open, and I I was immediately drawn to him. He played the cajon, which you sit on, right? Mm -hmm. So he was like under he he was like at a lower level than me. And it's crazy how they say you know sometimes you know the love of your life is right under your nose. And he was, and it was his eyes that I were I was drawn to, and like his, you know, his beautiful round eyes when he's like excited about something or wondering about something. That's that's what I was drawn to, and I I asked myself the first time I met him, September second, twenty twelve. I was I remember it was the day after Labor Day. Um, you know, I visited Saint Adelaide and. 
my friend, my friends were auditioning for the same position as me. And they said, hey, come sing. Come sing with us. I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, Gaston walked in. He said, hi, my name is Gaston. And I was like, hi, I'm Jamie. And I was like, what's his story? I was immediately intrigued. And it was his eyes that I thought. <laughs> Show the camera. <laughs> My eyebrows, which... Yeah. <laughs> and it was. It was his whole expression. I was just, like, I was drawn. I... I it's interesting. Piece. I was immediately drawn in. And um, that night at Starbucks, going back to our first date, which was about... September, October, November, really, September, October, November, December. I keep saying four months, but no, it was three months later. That's when we actually hung out. And got to know each other. So initially. after Starbucks, nothing. No. What? Yeah. After actually, no, no. That's <clears throat> not correct. After Starbucks, we went on four more dates within five weeks, and then we were boyfriend and girlfriend. <clears throat> it was fast. Like, yeah, we we wasted no time. <laughs> All right, everybody wants to ask. Yes. Did you ask him or did you ask her? <laughs> He he asked me those, those oh, next to, times. To be married? No, to be you know to boyfriend girlfriend. Oh, to be. oh. Girlfriend, girlfriend. Well, that that would be definitely me. Yes. Okay, pioneer hat who moves to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pioneer hat. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which, by the way, is I think a personality feature of youngest forms. I think we click with oldest borns. Mm -hmm. I don't... We were, we're, we're good friends with our middle siblings, mm -hmm. but we connect best. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Would you agree, yes. Marla? My wife is a second. Um, okay, I as, could be... She behaves as the, yeah. as the <laughs> oldest. Oh. Um, my, my wife um, and her sister were... They're Irish twins. Oh, okay. Um, you know, they were born, pretty much born like 10 months apart. Mm -hmm. So they grew up both as the olders oh, of their I siblings. See. So, yeah. yeah. And we had a similar thing of meeting and me seeing her. It's like, wow, I'm going to marry her one day. And she totally did not give me the time of day. Oh. Um, she said, oh, what an idiot. No. <laughs> <laughs> and gave me a hard time. Didn't Ours wasn't five weeks. It was mm. like five years. Wow. She's like, no, I have to finish college. Mm. Like, I just wanted to go out on a date. I don't yeah. marry you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah. marry you. Not yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was, that, Low that was key actually. I do, but I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah, yeah that was actually the, the first time I saw her. That was the, the thing I said to my cousin who was with me. I said, one day, I'm going to marry that one. Wow. I had no idea who she was. Yeah, so it's like, okay. It's amazing. Gotta work on that one. Yeah. 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 She did not give me the time of day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, sounds like, of course, she pushed through that. Pushed. Yeah. And then, um, oh, I should show this. Then we separated. And <gasps> then, then we, um, then oh. later on, I was like, hmm, you know, we're out of college and, you know, we separated and, not really talking. And then she sent me a card saying hello. And then she said, have you listened to this cassette tape? <laughs> and I'm like, so I listened to it and says, mm -hmm. what you won't do for love. And I'm like, is she trying to tell me something? Uh <laughs> <laughs> and so we started what talking and then, do, do, for, do love. for love. I do anything. Oh. Full yeah. of love, something like that. That group sings that song? I yeah, didn't know west. that. Go West. Yeah. I never knew who sang that. What you won't do, do, do for love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, oh, these are like messages. Yeah. These are messages. Oh. And so I called her laughing, and then um, and one thing went to another, and it was... Don't squeeze my hand like you want me to stop singing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rude. <laughs> okay. So... So, how long did you guys date before you got married? Oh, okay. Not long. Because th this Not is long, this yes. is one of the controversies usually with people who say it's like, oh, you guys should you guys should date longer 
You mm. guys should wait. And um, mm. I hear that a lot mm -hmm. from people. And I'm like, no, the, if the Holy Spirit is calling you, yeah. then you should respond. Yeah. Um, you know, if I, my wife and I, if we could have gotten married right away, it was like, yeah, we're ready. Mm -hmm. It's like, why wait? Mm -hmm. yeah. So did you, did you wait very long? We were separated because she was in the Philippines. Oh. And I went to school in the Philippines. We met there. Oh. Um, uh, little story. Our families have known each other for generations. Wow. And, uh, our, our, two fam our two families were part of the, I think four families has started our little village town. So um, we have interconnected marriages. <laughs> and okay. we had to do everything the traditional way. You know, mm -hmm. the two oldest people in our family, oldest people in her family, mm -hmm. together and meet and make decisions regarding our marriage. Actually, I think we do that just to make sure we're not related. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why it's done. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we, we did that whole thing. Everyone from here in San Francisco and Chicago flew back to the Philippines because great-grandma said you can't get married here because there's divorce. And, of Ooh. course, she said people who are over there can't come over here, but you all can come home. So my entire family, you know, if that plane went down, we would have been wiped out. Um, wow. Yeah, we, we all went back, um, got married in the Philippines, mm. and then came back. Um, she stayed behind for about six months and oh. then came. And then, um, yeah, so our courtship and the whole thing was two years. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So because that's what the... Wow. That's what, um, when I went to school at Centro Escolar University, the professor of social graces said that that's the way that it's supposed to be. Interesting. 0.5 unit class that you had to take before graduating. Wow. Social graces. Social graces. Yes. Oh. I've Tells never... Tells you how to walk, how to court, how long courtship is, where the fork, spoons, and knives go. Did you have a debut <laughs> after that? And like, how does that work? I was like, why do I have to take this class? Oh, uh, interesting. <clears throat> it sounds like cotillion. Yeah. It, it sounds like, like what it ladies go to. It was a 30-minute class once a week mm. for one semester. And I was like, why? Because yeah. the school that I went to used to be an all-girls college. My sisters oh. went there. Okay. And then it became co-ed when I went. So 40,000 students. Wow, that's wow. a huge school. Yeah, only 2,000 were males. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and, and of course, and two the that is what you meant. two men's right? restrooms, no. Yeah. <laughs> she transferred to another university. Oh. <laughs> but we knew each other. We, we, our families knew each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Our yeah. families knew each other, and w that's where, how I saw her. And, oh, okay. Uh, fell in love with her. You know, one of wow. the things is, you know how Filipinos, we look for that light skin mm -hmm. and things like that. But I grew up here. Mm -hmm. I wanted people with color. And mm -hmm. my wife... That's an interesting thing. ...is darker mm -hmm. skin. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a word for that in Filipino, kaligatang kayumangi. Um, yeah. And yeah, so you're yeah. kaligatang kayumangi. Yes. And so, Very much so. Yeah. So I was like... And everyone was like, but she's dark. Like, mm. What are you talking about? That's beautiful. Yeah. And so, and she loves the sun, and so that's why yes. I was like, oh, that's the one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone else that they were trying to fix me up with was like pasty white. Mm -hmm. It's like no, they look like they're sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's you know I I love to hear that because. Sometimes I don't believe Gaston when he's like, oh, I love your skin tone. It's beautiful. Because I grew up understanding that I was too dark. Yes, yeah, toxic get out of the, mentality. Yep. Get out of the sun. You know, stop, stop sunbathing. Why do you do yeah. that? And it's like, it feels good. I like it. And Jamie, so, you're too dark. No one's going to marry you. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, I... I I can't tell you, you what control how many times I've heard that. that. So like, yeah, exactly. So why would you say that? Yeah. Right? So 